Yo, what's up guys? The Insane Game Freak here. It is Friday night. I have a headache. And I have watched most of my Friday anime except for, I think, Samurai Bride because I've been lazy and I'm kind of, as I said, I have a headache. And a bullshit harem isn't necessarily the thing I need to be watching right now. Also, because of the point of this video. Now, granted, the headache isn't really due to any of that shit. It's really, I just have a headache for the sake of having a headache. I know it would be for comedy gold to sit here and tell you, Oh, I got the headache because I just read all this bullshit on the Xbox, and the Xbox is bullshit, and, you know, all this other crap. But I, I, I kind of want to talk to you about it, but not really in the joking manner. Um, so, we got all these confirmations for the Xbox One. Uh, the main important things is that it needs to be online once every 24 hours. You could trade in, but the publishers reserve the right to to pretty much do any trading fees for said games, aka meaning uh, Microsoft created the infrastructure for you for them to do it, but technically they're not the ones doing it. You know the whole it's not really our fault because we're not doing it, even though it's like you, you're 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 trying to make it seem that way, but you still want people. You're you're encouraging people to do it. It's like when you don't have something there. That's one thing, but when you have something there, and you're like, well, you can use it if you want, it's like that's that's encouraging the publisher to use it. Um, to pretty much put DIM, and for those who don't understand tech speak, what, essentially what that is, is like digital rights management, aka meaning they can block uh, the using of used games, used copies of their games, meaning if you buy a new version, that's the only version you're going to use. If you need to get another version, or if you want a cheaper version of it, guess what? You're gonna have to pay for it, another new copy, because you damn sure ain't getting a used copy, which is kind of ridiculous to me, because eventually they're gonna stop selling new new copies of a game after a while, and then what happens then? Then you, then you can't get the game anymore because the you, because the publisher not only blocked the used version of the game. Uh, that means the only copies you can get is the new ones, and if the new ones, you know, after like a few years, they stop making the new ones because there's like a new version of the game coming out, what the fuck? And then, but then again, I guess publishers have an advantage to be like, well, we're gonna make an HD version, or we're gonna make an upscale version of the same game that you paid for like three years ago because you can't buy it anymore because there's no new copies of it, and they block the ability to buy used copies of it, uh, which is uh, obviously bullshit. So, on top of all of that, let's also talk about the fact that the, the loaning and renting thing with Xbox One is also a pain in the ass because technically, at launch, you won't be able to do it anyway because they don't have this thing set up with their quote-unquote gaming partners to, uh, to, to do the loaning or renting, meaning if you wanted to get an Xbox One at launch and were to want to get you know wanted to loan or rent games through like the legal means of loaning and renting games and not just doing it with your friends you can't you can't even let's that, say you can only afford the console that means you can't even rent an xbox one game from redbox or uh gamefly or, or the or, or any other like gaming loaning site or company or whatever the fuck you can't do it because it won't be set up at launch which is already a setup for a bad launch on top of which, getting into the whole loaning games with your friends, you can do it. You can do it, but the problem is, is that for one, they have to have been on your friends list for the first 30 days, for at least 30 days, and then on top of which, you can only do it once. And I'm not talking, a lot of people are still confused on this, myself included, like, what does that mean? Does that mean like after you loan the game to them, does that mean you can't get the game back? And that also means that after they've played the game, that means they can't loan the game. They're just stuck with a game. Unless they pay for a new game, they do not have the ability to loan the game. Is that is that what I'm understanding here? I, it's just it's, it's just a whole bunch of unnecessary crap. Uh, the fact that you have to wait a month in order to be able to, to do something as basic as be like, hey, bro, come over to the house. I'll let you borrow a... Uh, I'm gonna use a Nintendo game. This, I want you. You said you wanted to try Pikmin three, right? Because you've never played a Pikmin game. Here you go. I can't do that. No, I have to wait. You have to wait a month where your interest in the game might be shot anyway, and then be like, "Hey, bro, can I add you? Can you know? Can you? <laughs> do you want to borrow the Pikmin game? Like it, it? That that's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous to me. Or for Xbox to be Halo, Halo five or some shit. I, 
what? Oh, okay. And the other thing, now granted, this this last thing wasn't something that inherently bothered me, but I know it bothered a lot of people. Uh, they did confirm that you can turn off your connect. You can turn it off, and they. But the thing is, it's still probably gonna have to be connected because they said it worked because it says the connect is bundled with the console, aka meaning you gotta have the connect anyway. So it's probably which makes even less sense. That means you can turn off the connect, but you can't disconnect the connect. That doesn't make any sense. So either that or this or this statement is contradicting the previous statement about having the connect always connected. Either way, it doesn't make any sense regardless. Um, These are just like stupid things that bog down a system for the fuck it's bogging down a system. I mean, granted, it it does have some, you know, the ability of like, oh, you can install it. I mean, mean, let's be perfectly honest. Microsoft, like Xbox One, is, 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 is more geared towards digital gaming than physical gaming. That's why there's all this BS behind physical gaming. They're trying to get you to buy your games digitally. And I understand in terms of technology and the way things are going, everything is going digital. I mean, for God's sakes, you have sites like fucking Crunchyroll that just that physically deal with digital distrib- distribution of anime. And you have like shit like Viz Manga that does the digital, dis- di- digital distribution of manga. So I understand everything is going digital. But there are ways of easing the person into it, like the fact that you can buy the retail game digitally or you can buy it physically. The Wii U does this. I think you can do this. The PS3 does this. The Xbox 360 does this. That's a, that's a way of easing the person into the digital market. When you create a, 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 a system like the Xbox One that's specifically designed for digital gaming, you, you notice almost all the restrictions I've mentioned so far are all on physical-based gaming. If you have a physical disc... Why is that? Because this this console is anti fiscal disc gaming. It wants digital gaming. Why? Because there's a lot more control they can have over your shit when it's digital. But at the same time, and that but the problem I have with digital gaming, which is prior part of the reasons why I don't like gaming on the PC, is I like to own my games. I like to have a physical copy. I don't like to be restricted to the point where it's like if you don't have you know, if you don't have Steam up or or if you want to take your game with you, you can't fucking do that. Like, I understand PC gaming is not really as restricted as I may be making it sound, but I always, I grew up with physical copy. It may be some nostalgia bullshit. I'm not going to really lie to you there. But at the same time, it just feels dickish because this is shit they don't have to do. They're doing this because they're trying to get you to strictly buy digitally. Because at that point, they can trap you. Like, like with the whole uh, Xbox One isn't 360 compatible because they're going to try to get you to buy 360 games on the Xbox One or on the or the next generation Xbox after Xbox One. They, they, tr- and then the whole fact that you're uh the the games you downloaded and the PS4 is doing this too, where the games you downloaded on PSN or Xbox Live don't carry over anyway. AKA they're trying to get you to buy the shit again. They they're trying the, the thing with digital is that they can trap you into paying for something twice. They can trap you into paying for it at full price, even though you're getting less, like, it, it, it just baffles the fuck out of me, and see, here's the thing, this is bad for gaming in general, this isn't just bad for, you know, Xbox fans, this is bad for all gamers, because, you know, there are people who are legit gamers who game on the Xbox 360, and it's like, first off, you're, you're not even, it's not even a smooth transition to the Xbox One from the 360. Because the 360 feels more free than the damn new console that's coming out this year. A console that's what? Uh, eight years old? Yeah, because uh, the 360 came out in 2005. A console that came out in 2005 feels more free than a console that came out that's coming out this year. What 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 sense does that make? Uh, it, it, and as I said, it's, it's bad for gaming because it's like... It's bad for gaming for two reasons. For one, because of both ways it can go. It can either go in the way of, well, I guess we're just not going to buy an Xbox, in which case Microsoft starts losing money, and if Microsoft wants to be ignorant about it, well, see, the thing is, then you deprive yourself of a gaming experience, but at the same time, you're also depriving yourself of a subpar gaming experience. So I guess, in a sense, not buying the console would do better to improve, to make Microsoft realize their mistakes. 
The problem is that this console will probably still sell anyway because as I said, none of these things are, are all these things are all old school gaming ideas. Meaning because I mean even when I look at it from a from my personal standpoint, the shit that really bothers the shit that's really gonna bother me on this is barely any of this. Because for one, I don't have any friends I really lend games to like that to begin with. Two, if anyone's going to be using the fucking console, it's probably only going to be me anyway. Uh, I, I usually have a constant internet connection anyway, so it's not going to... It's not be like, oh, no, I can't play my console because... Like, like the restriction on the always online thing or just online, you know, once a day is not going to affect me. Most of this shit isn't affecting me. It's not going to affect my inherent gaming experience. And that's and that's Microsoft's way of slowly fucking you over. Like, they're fucking... They, I don't think about this... I thought Xbox Live was fucking the consumer over. But a lot of people kind of justified it with, well, technically it is the best online console experience. But at the same time, it's still not just, that doesn't justify it. It just makes it less, you just don't feel less as fucked when you, when you, when you, when you pay for it. But it's still, you're still being fucked over. Xbox One is kind of like, we're going to put a whole bunch of uh, undertone bullshit that won't inherently affect your ability to do things until you just random until the situation just randomly occurs because none of these situations are things that are going to inherently occur like all the damn time and even if they are most parents who buy this shit for the kids and as much as people don't want to admit it a lot of xbox fans are children um as much as you would think it would be more nintendo a lot of xbox fans are kids um uh, it's only going to really affect them in that one instance, and then they're not going to really know what the fuck to do. And you're going to have a like, it's not like the right ring of death where it would affect you inherently, and you'd be like, okay, we got to do something about this. Like, this is the shit that would affect you in situ certain situations. It's like when a fucking, it's like when a certain uh, standard is met, then it's like, ding, now you're getting fucked in the ass. It's like, it's like, like it's not going to just get you at the from the get go, and that's probably why people will probably still buy this fucking console because. If you buy a new game and you don't link your games and you have a consistent internet connection, does this really? None of this shit will inherently bother you. Even the even the connect shit may not even inherently bother you. The problem, the other, which is the connect thing, is actually the only thing that annoys me. If I have to keep that thing connected and I gotta be a certain distance away and shit, um, you, you can see my room right here. My bed is like a few inches away from my TV. It's not even funny. This is not going to work for me if it's that whole distance bullshit I gotta do so the connect thing is the only inherent issue for me uh, but everything else wouldn't really bother me to begin with but the problem is I, to me is a moral thing it's like to me when you let them do this shit for Xbox Live in the right ring of death cause uh, let's be honest with you the 360 is literally one of the only consoles that can get away with being a fucking half like half of the time over half the time failure rate and still sell like a fucking beast. The thing outsold the 360 and is, I think right now is the most sold in terms of last gen consoles. A console that had a horrible fail rate, scratched the shit out of discs and charged you for something you were already paying for and the thing still came out on top or at the very least second place. What kind of logic is that? When when Microsoft saw that they could get away with that, they were like, "Fuck it, we're gonna take it the next the next step further." Because people complain about the red ring, people complain about the scratching of the disc, people complain about Xbox Live. But guess what? You fucking still you still bought Xbox Live. You still went out and bought multiple 360s. I wonder how many of you actually still own the original 360 that you bought in 2005 on launch. And this is really just talking to the launch date crowd. Shit, even people who've just bought 360s in general, like. The first generation 360, not the 360 Slim, I'm not counting that piece of shit, because that obviously is the updated version. How many of you still own the original Xbox? You guys let them do all of these three things. These three things in, these three things in themselves were bullshit. All three of them were bullshit. You should not have had a console come out the gate that failed over half the time. You shouldn't have had a fucking console that come, uh, come out here and scratch the shit out of discs, because you didn't, you rushed the console out because you wanted to be first, and you shouldn't have had a console come out that fucking charged you for a service that you were already paying for without the Xbox. Especially when the two competitors, you didn't have to pay for. You didn't have to pay for the Wii internet. 
and you didn't have to pay for the PSN. PSN was smart. They were like, we're going to give you a good version and a better version. You want to pay for the better version, you can. But we're not going to take away your ability to just use the free version. When you let a company get away with that much, and that was, and they don't, that, that, those are significant things. When you go into the next generation, they're like, well, fuck, we got away with these three things, and these were pretty offensive. Fuck it. We can probably do this. And guess what? They're going to get away with it again. Because either the consumer is stupid, the consumer does not... It's the same thing It's the same thing with the anime and manga industry. It's all about self-gratification. Humans nowadays, we are selfish motherfucking creatures. If we can get shit quick and now, we will. That's how we work. We don't give a fuck about anything else. It's like, what about the industry? Fuck the industry. If I can get my game now, then fuck everybody else. And you do that shit, and then the company gets in the company just like well fuck it they don't seem to give a fuck so we're gonna keep doing it you're not when you don't tell the industry that there's something wrong they don't fucking think anything's wrong and the way they're reacting to this whole PR bullshit is that most of this shit will probably stay and most of you won't even care most of you won't even care uh, people will say it's bullshit people will say it's stupid you'll do the same thing you did with the 360 and guess what you will buy, if the console has that same failure rate problem, you'll buy the fucking thing again. You'll do it again. Because you fuckers are, because that, that's how the, that's how the consumer is nowadays. We don't give a fuck about industries or any other companies. All the fuck we seem to care about is whether we can play the new Halo, the new fucking Jack and Daxter. No, that's bullshit. We know they're not doing that. The new... The new Uncharted game, or the new God of War game, or the new fucking Super Mario game, or the Super Metroid game. That's all the fuck we care about. Industry shit is like the last thing in our minds. And these things, and all these little issues with the damn Xbox One, are inherently bad things. But guess what? They don't affect you if you buy a new copy of a game and you don't loan it. Actually, the loaning shit only affects your friend. It doesn't really piss you off because it's like, well, fuck, I already paid for the game. Unless you're the one borrowing the game, that's the only time it's going to bug you. The only thing out of this entire thing that may come out to be a pain in the ass is the publisher shit. But considering that companies like Capcom and EA can fuck over the consumer real easily, like they like Capcom did almost all of last year and EA did, and motherfuckers still pay for it, that's not making me think that this shit won't go exactly the same way. That's that it's, it's bad. It's just this is fucking horrible. But it'll go the same way. And granted, I didn't buy the 360 because I thought that was, I thought half that shit was bullshit. Why the fuck would I pay for a console that charges me for internet when I'm already paying for internet? Uh, fucking scratches my discs. So if I even want to, even if I wanted to watch movies on the damn thing, I have scratched disc. And for me, I, you know, I work at a library, so I can just rent discs from the library. What I'm gonna do? Return a rent disc with scratches on it? The fuck is that? Or, I, and also, the fact that the console breaks down half the time. People are like, like and, and it's just like, what the fuck? And honestly, if you are a Microsoft fan, I would just say, buy PC. Because most of the games you're going to get on that console are probably going to come out on the PC anyway. I mean, most of the games you get now come out on the PC. So what the fuck does it really matter? I, w I would just say, buy PC. I would say, create your own gaming PC. I bet you $5.00. Not five dollars. I, I, I always do that. I'm like, that, that's always a tendency of mine. But I promise you, I bet you this will be the generation a lot of motherfuckers cross over the game PC gaming. I don't have a reason to because I never was interested in the Microsoft consoles to begin with. None of them. And at least with the first Xbox, the original Xbox, I had a reason to be interested. 360, no. And Xbox One, hell fucking no. I'm not, I wouldn't buy this thing on a moral stance even if I gave a shit about the franchises. But the fact that I don't give a shit about the franchises and all this extra bullshit, fuck you. Fuck, how the fuck was this supposed to bring in new customers? Just saying. And I guess I will say one thing about the, the secondhand gaming. You know, a lot of people end up getting into, you know, you, you decrease the amount of people getting interested, introduced to your fr franchises when you restrict used games. I'll give you an example. I got into Kingdom Hearts through used games. I did not own the original Kingdom Hearts, nor did I own Chain of Memories, originally. Well, not the GBA version, anyway. My friend Kenny, uh, my best friend Kenny, shout out to you, Kenny. You, you better, well, I don't know, you might be watching this, fuck it. Uh, 
Uh, let me borrow the first Kingdom Hearts, which I blew through, and then let me borrow Chain of Memories, which I got around like halfway through. And it was my introduction to those two series in that game, especially since Xbox is coming out with all these new franchises. Uh, it was because of those introductions to those games that I ended up buying Kingdom Hearts 2 on day one. I also bought Chain of Memories re-release on the PS2. And I plan to get the remix game, I get the re uh, what was it, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD remix. And I plan to get Dream, Bro Dream Drop Distance. Sony gained the PS gained the fucking Kingdom Hearts fan. You got money from me from as of right now probably like two damn games because two games borderlining on three and four, and that was from used games. That wasn't because I spent I went out of my way and bought. So when you hear a friend's recommendation, you're more likely to get into the game. And if it's a new series that may possibly that will probably have at least one or more sequels after it. You create a, a, a new generation of customers with used games. So, to me, to, to do this, the used game thing anyway, is just a dick move. But, it's just... It, it, we're going to see how the PS4 rolls, but if the PS4 is on the same bullshit, then I'm probably going to have to do is hope that within a year's time... After the releases of these consoles, they change shit. Probably like two years. Probably be like the same thing with the PS3. Where I waited until 2010 to get one. Even though the bitch came out in like 2006. And it took me four years to buy the console. I might end up waiting another four years. Or while I'm playing my Wii U, just fucking buy. Just start getting into PC game, gaming. Because if, if the Xbox is going to be about all this online bullshit anyway. Why don't I at least get a better... Think why don't I just get a better gaming console, quote unquote, because it's a PC, and yeah, I'm spending a little bit more money, but at least I'm getting a better quality product, and I know exactly what I'm getting into, and I know what the fuck I'm dealing with. Instead of jumping into a console, a console game that's trying to pretend like it's a PC. That's one thing I hate about new generation gaming. They feel like you need to play. You know what you're gonna appeal to the customer is to pretend like you're a PC. If I wanted a fucking PC. I would have went out and either bought or made my own fucking PC. I go to console gaming because I like console gaming. Don't take away shit from console gaming that makes it console gaming. That makes console gaming good. That's what the Xbox One is like. It's just like, fuck it. PC, nigga. Go to PC. That's what you're telling me, Xbox. Because there's nothing you're doing now that makes you a console anymore. You're just like, you're like a, a bullshit-ass PC. You're like a dumbed-down PC. And people would just rather buy a PC and make their own PC that has a lot better shit in, in the damn thing than what you're presenting. But anyways, I've ran it on like 20-something minutes. But I just wanted to talk about that. Now, uh, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. This, uh, please, If you're an Xbox fan, I especially want to hear from you. For those who bought a 360. For those who, who've been repping Microsoft in terms of supporting their company. What are your thoughts, and what do you think about, you know, everything I've stated? So, uh, this has been the Insane Game Freak. Life's a game, play to win, and I will catch you guys later. Peace out. I need to go take a towel off, because my head is still hurting.